Welcome to Gary Keep It Simple. Got one today that's a little bit sad. It's a bit of a story to it, and you see, you might have seen a bit of it before. But this is a well, it's a tear down really of a reel to reel, and we'll go into a little bit of a story as we go through, and you can see what's what. This was my dad in about 1960. Can't exactly date the photograph, and I can't exactly date the tape recorder, but I do know it was around about the turn of the 50s to 60s, so it's close enough. Anyway, this is the story of what it has done in the last 60 odd years, 64 years. Anyway, this is it. Here we go. Well, you can see they knew how to make vinyl in those days because the actual covering, I think it's survived quite well. But the hinges have gone rusty and um, the handle, well, it's not a handle anymore. It's just a strap with rust, or is it just a rust with strap? Anyway, this is the top of it. It's a concert turn, as you can see. It was a good quality machine at the time. And it's, uh, well, we'll see how good it was when we get into it. Now you can see there's a bit of wire earth in the playback head there and you got this is the thing and it's, it's intended to be fast and slow. Now interestingly that goes around quite smoothly as does that one. You can feel there's a bit of drag on there. This switch operates and it goes cluggity click which is all very good. I'm impressed with that. So and then you've got there the volume control that's the play release and yeah, volume control there and tone control there with the traditional knobs of the time, contemporary. Now I'm going to take the lid off this so we'll, we'll have to take the screws out and have, have a look and break it down from there. But let's have a look down there, see there's the felts for pushing the tape against the heads and yeah, overall it's, it doesn't, I mean, considering its age, doesn't look that bad, does it really? It's 64 years. 64 years, wow. Anyway, so we undo this. Interesting that that matches the um, knobs to hold the reels on. And as you can see, now I did have this off before, just this little bit. This is as far as I've... Uh, on the pinch roller. And I'll show you why. You just take that washer off there. And it's... It's showing its age, shall we say. It's um, it's not really up to it. Look, you see. Now people say that IPA will dry out rubber. I think age dries out rubber, and uh, it's got really good oxide in there. And you can see it is as hard as a rock. It has petrified, and that is a perennial problem. I do apologise for the light reflection, but I wanted to get the actual picture to be as, as clean as possible so uh, I, I try and sort that out a little bit later but anyway so let me take those little bits off there just to see what's what they do unscrew and you've got a nice aluminium spindle and they're as true as the day they were manufactured which is yeah, a long time ago as we've already said so let's see where we go from here got to take the knobs off because nothing's going to happen with the knobs on so Get myself a screwdriver. You can see on here there's a record head, playback head, and there's the felts and tone control. And up the top is a magic eye, which is what was used to set the record levels. So we're back on to just having a look around here. It's quite interesting the way these felts have aged. They're not the fluffiest they've ever been, but they still actually are felt. And well, you can hear the springy noise, it's pretty good actually. But it's uh, mechanically, it appears to actually still be sort of moving bits in the right position and things. Um, obviously, it's not. But the, so we've got the lid off now, and this is where we look now. See all these black things here? Those are the brakes for the drum, uh, for the spools, and this is your play lever. Now, twenty twenty is not a date. I don't know what it is, but it's not a date. It was on there for a reason, I guess. So there's where you push the play, and that's your capstan there. And as you can see, that's still got some swing on it. 
we've uh, got this. Sometimes you look at something, 19, you know, 64 years old, and that switch there, not the one I'm playing with, but the orange one, that looks like it could have been fitted yesterday. Well, I can assure you it wasn't. This hasn't been out, this hasn't really been seen for the last 40 years. Well, I haven't seen it for 40 years, put it that way, because um, I haven't seen it since I left home. And it was in the shed, or the garage, when I left home. So, yeah, I mean, it, it says for the quality and skill of the engineers that these metal bits still work, albeit a little bit stiff, but, you know, they physically do work. Now, this was interesting. I thought I'd undo that. So this is the erase head, and you can see here, it looks like a diagram of an erase head. You've got a magnetic core, soft iron core, and you've got coils around it. And that is all there is to it. It is literally the way we draw them. And next to it we've got the record head. So that one, we'll undo the screw on there. That one obviously has had problems with the earthing because for some reason well, I seem to remember there was a bit of hum and my dad put that earthing strap onto it to the main tape guide there. You can see the sleeve actually on the capstan. He had it machined so he had a four speed rather than just the two speed it originally came with. Now that was a surprise. I was not expecting that to have been in a valve socket. and It, looks, it must be an octal socket. So that was a bit of a surprise. So I thought, well, I'll have a go at this one, see if that one comes out. And, uh, well, yeah. you'll, you'll have to wait and see. Yep, that one's in an octal socket as well. So you can get a close-up here. You can see exactly how it's made. And it's exactly what you would... It's a transformer, effectively. It's a transformer. Absolutely amazing. It would have been nice if it had been clean, but then, you know... I didn't know it existed, and uh, this is a as it happens, so this is as it happens. I'm going to see if I can get the lid off the other one now, because the other one, still got the screw in it, the other one is the record head, so it's going to be slightly different, not a lot, but slightly different, see if we can get it apart. And uh, the simple answer is yes, I could get it apart. And here it is. It looks almost identical to the other one. You'd have to go by the electrical properties to know exactly what the differences were. It's got um, four coils on it, so that's uh, probably re relevant. And, yeah. So here we go. Now this is actually putting it on its side. And this is the first time I've ever seen inside here. I knew of it, but I've never seen in it. And, uh, yeah, I think it's had some things living in it. Not totally sure, but it looks like there have been things living in it. And um, there's nothing living in it now. Now this little bit here, that was a bit of foam rubber. And like all the other foamy bits and plastic bits, it has petrified. Absolutely amazing. So... Uh, that's the main reason why I haven't bothered trying to do anything with this, because there are parts there that I just cannot get. And uh, I did offer this to anybody who wanted it, and nobody's come forward, so it's going in the recycling, unfortunately. But I thought it was worth having a look and see what was what before we did that. Now that twisted cable there, not that one, that one, that's the speed control switch, which, as I say, was a retro mod. And um, you can see down there, there's uh, there's there's been some some habitation. There has been a spider, and I don't know if he's I don't think he's still alive. It's probably just a a husk of a spider. And now, if we're looking at that's where the storage was. So the speaker there, a little elliptical speaker, and lots of um, white stuff, for want of a better description. It is really, yeah, it's, um, it's as it is. So this is a true life exploration of an abandoned thing. Welcome to Abandoned. 
can't do the accent. Gave it a try. So look in here. I've actually cut the wires now so we can get to it. And you can see not much in the way of printed circuit boards. You've got two, uh, those are the switches there. We call playback switch. That's not like you see on a cassette deck, is it? There's a speaker cable. And um, anybody got any idea what these yellow things are that are on there? It says to be in contact with the chassis, but I've no idea what they are. This is not my area of expertise. This is, I know how it works, and I know how the valves work, but I don't know the circuitry as such. And these components, I mean, you've got wooden bits in there, look. Now that's the back end of the magic eye, which is basically a valve of some kind. It's a bit like a CRT, I guess. And you've got the transforms. Now, what I was surprised about here is that this is a motor. This is the capstan motor. And I was looking for a belt, and there isn't one. But what there is, is an idler. So the capstan is driven, this big flywheel is being driven by an idler from the motor. And it's, you can see there, it's mounted bearings and things. It's all very, it's a bit rusty, which is another good reason for it to be a problem, of course. But this, this flywheel, look, it's as deep as the width of my finger. And my fingers are not particular. Somebody said they look like sausages, so you know, it's as deep as a sausage. And then we're looking at these components here, various capacitors, resistors, and things. Those are uh, the, those toffee capacitors are always look interesting to me. That I thought was a bit flimsy. It's one of it's the mains transformer, but it's mounted over the spool motor. So effectively, they are direct drive spools and the capstan as we said is, is driven off the flywheel uh, so that they can start and stop it and you can see there the valves and uh, the way the switches are done uh, mullard valves I think they are yeah mullard valves so it's not a very complicated circuit obviously there's not an awful lot in there in terms of you know, there could be a lot more it's only mono of course but it is rather clever. It was high quality and it did work. Well, there you go. There's a bit of a history lesson there for me. Certainly a trip down memory lane. It's an interesting piece of kit. It was actually obviously very well made. I mean, direct drive on the spools and things. Such a shame about all the plastic bits and the foamy bits having gone rigid. I, mean, I remember those brakes being soft and flexible and I remember using it as a kid. So it was a was a nice piece of kit when it was made but you know it's just one of those things it's got old and uh, it's no good anymore but anyway i hope you got something out of that a little trip down memory lane for somebody if you can recognize what those things were mounted on the on the chassis that'd be interesting and uh, anyway if you've got anything from that maybe you'd like to subscribe or that will give you the opportunity to see other stuff as it comes up and uh, oh don't forget if you thought it was any good click on the like and if you want to leave a comment or answer a question or, or ask a question anything like that please do so more than happy to respond and uh, anyway that's it for now catch you another time thanks for watching bye bye